الصلاه والسلام على خير خلقه وافضل بريته وبالقاسم محمد وعلى اهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين اما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته Many, many months ago, we left our discussions on the subject of Islamic ethics, morals, and behavior, and akhlaqiyat. And according to my memory, I'm going to start from where I have left. The subject that we, have going, we are going to discuss tonight is a subject which is commonly shared by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by his prophet and imam, and by us all. And it is the sign of excellence and virtue, the sign of perfection for all of us. For our creator himself, for our prophet, and for Ayyumma sallallahu alayhi wa ajma'in. Now, and it is also a virtue for a human being. Now what is that? <clears throat> that is called in Arabic Rahman. In English, you can translate it as grace, as mercy, and also as kindness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Rahman as well as Rahim. And His mercy and kindness prevails among believers and non-believers here and hereafter in this world and also in after discussing the risk roji as we say risk the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa said something which really makes us sometimes think because as we grow up and as we become responsible for our own sustenance, for our own earning and for our own provision and maintenance, we believe that we are the providers. We believe that we earn because of our efforts. And we start believing that if we earn and whatever we get, it is because of our own capabilities. And the Prophet said, man forgets previous three stages in which in spite of his helplessness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided the first stage of my helplessness is when I was in the womb of my mother he provided sustained I was totally helpless there was no possibility of myself maintaining my life and it was his ultimate mercy and kindness and rahmat that he made provision for me while I was still unborn. Right? And then I was born helpless. Immediately as I was born, the provision was ready for my maintenance and for my upkeep. My mother breastfed me and looked after my health. But the milk was ready, as if waiting for someone to come and suckle and have his or her son. True. And then the Prophet said, in the third stage when he, the child grows up, yet the stage of sensibility and sensitivity has not come. The child is not able to look after itself, not to provide. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in his ultimate mercy makes the arrangements that that child is looked after by the parents so much so that a child seldom rarely understands from where food is coming he goes home everything is ready mother has set the table father mother brothers and sisters all of them sit together to eat the son or the daughter at that stage does not even know how much my father or mother has struggled to bring this at home. The Prophet says, in his three previous stages, man forgets 
that in spite of his helplessness he provided now that he has some strength in his limb he believes that he provides there is no provision but from rahmat of allah he now in kanzul ummal which is a book by ahl sunnah mulla ma muttaqi al hindi of hyderabad dakkan india has compiled kanzul ummal which is of course a sunni reference book but is used by the mujtahidin of shia and sunnah kanzul ummal is an encyclopedia of hadith based on which mujtahidin give their rulings now this man in his hadith one of the ahadith writes that umar ibn khattab says that once it so happened that the prisoners of war came after jihad prisoners came we were all sitting and we saw a very young child an infant just about struggling here and there trying to run immediately a woman from among the prisoners ran after the infant took the infant by her hand uh, kept very dearly near the chest and started later on breast feeding immediately the prophet said oh my sahaba and companions would you imagine this woman allowing her child to be injured in any way they said ya rasulullah it is impossible she must be the mother because the child was just trying to go away and she immediately jumped to save she said allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to you and me is more kind than the mother is to her child umar ibn khattab rahmat of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasan basri who used to be a mystic a sufi in the days of imam hasan imam hussein and also in the days of imam zainul abidin salawatullah wa salam in fact i have some references which prove that he was there he was in the time of amirul mu'minin alayhi salam but we have got to carry out some research on that but in any case in the days of three imams hasan basri was there he was a mystic a teacher a sufi one day he had so many of his students and he said i am surprised if a man is saved how is he saved i am not surprised if a man is ruined why he is ruined ajibtu mimman naja kayfa naja wa laysa al ajab mimman halak kayfa halak what he wanted to say was that in this on this earth we human beings are surrounded by so many adversities that a wrong can happen to us easily i come out of the from my home up to imam bara so many things can happen to me god forbid hmm? an accident can happen some other car can come and bang my car hmm? or very easy what happened to me when i came for the first time in england in winter never knowing what black ice was i stepped out of the car of my friend first step was on the ground second step and i slipped and i, I don't know how far i went it can happen huh? and i come here and something falls on my head from the member i slip off anything can happen ajibtu liman naja kayfa naja how can a man be saved that is something surprising if a man is somehow destroyed ruined or harm that is not surprising because it is in abundance our fourth imam heard this somebody said they reported imam alayhi salam said wa ana aqul now i say ajibtu liman halak kayfa halak ma sa'ati rahmatillah i am surprised how a man can be harmed and ruined not how he can be saved because i know that the rahmat of allah is all embracing see so what is the reason <clears throat> there are questions in the minds of people here sitting here our young men will have some questions our women will have some questions that all that is happening on earth 
some people are being killed by landslides, some by earthquakes, some by whatever means, huh? and you say that Allah is Rahim. The question has been there since our Aimma and earlier. It is not a new question. Imam Muhammad Taqi Salawatullah Salaamu Alaihi Reporting from Biharul Anwar of Allama Majlis Alayhi Rahman Imam Alayhi Salaam was asked the same question and the answer that he gave is final. Now, I am not the judge nor are you the judge. Everyone has got to judge himself. That is the best thing. Why should we judge others? Judge ourselves. Imam al Islam said, I'lamu anna Allah tabarak wa ta'ala al Halim al Alim. Know you all that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very patient and forbearing, knows everything. Innama ghadabuhu ala man lam yakbal riva. Whenever you find someone has become victim of his anger and wrath, you must always understand that it is he who refused to accept his blessing. وَإِنَّمَا يَمْنَعُ لِمَنْ لَمْ يَقْبَلْ And he never stops his bounties. It only stops when the man himself decides not to receive. وَإِنَّمَا يَظِلُّ لِمَنْ لَمْ يَقْبَلْ and he goes astray who refuses to be guided by him. That means when I decide that I don't want his pleasure, then I incur his displeasure. When I decide I don't want his gifts, I am told by istighfar, by namaz, by Quran, by remembering him, by doing good to the people, by so many good things, I can receive his bounties. I myself don't want it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not give by force. So whatever is happening, here and there. Let us not just immediately draw conclusions when a man, when mankind itself decides to stop receiving the bounty, stop. That's all. Allah does not stop. Right? Same way, this virtue of Rahmah became a significant virtue of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. The famous ayah is وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Oh Prophet, we have not sent you but as a rahmat and grace for the whole universe. Let us take one example and then I'll come to what I want to say because I know there is another program after this but inshallah there will be a continuation. In the battle of Ohud, the second battle of Islam, the Prophet First, consulted the Muslims, consulted. This is historical. Shall we fight Ohud in Medina or outside? They all sat together and decided that, Ya Rasulullah, we believe that we must fight out on the mountain of Ohud. And the Prophet said, I feel that we must fight in Medina. That means we should wait for the enemies to come till they arrive in the city. Then we should defend. But they said, Ya Rasulullah, we all believe that it should be outside. So the Prophet conceded to their request and the battle was fought on the Ohad. As we know, when we go to Medina, we see this mountain of Ohad. When they reached there, in the beginning, the Prophet made an arrangement that there was a particular slope behind the mountain, a slope where the Prophet said, you, a group of people, you will not move from here until commanded. Unless I tell you, don't move from this. Whatever comes, you don't move from this station. On the other stop, the fight went on. And as the enemy started running away from here, the Muslims from this side started collecting spoils of war, Malaganim. Here, these Muslims who were told not to move, when they saw that Mali Ghanima is being taken away by others, they left the station. Greed. They thought they'll be left out. The moment they left the station, the enemy from behind attacked the army of Islam and there was chaos. 
in Ohad, as we know. Ohad, the battle of Ohad ended with no one a victorious, no one vanquished. Nobody knows. It was all disorder. And they started running, running away up to Medina. People left the Prophet, you know, only two were left on the battlefield. The Prophet and Ali ibn Abi Talib oh. And very interesting anecdote is there. The Prophet looked at Imam Ali and said, Ya Ali, why didn't you go? Well, Ali alayhi salam could have said, Ya Rasulullah, I'm a brave man. I mean, that could have been an answer. I am a brave man. Or he could have said, Ya Rasulullah, how can I leave you alone? There could have been so many replies and answers. But the answer that he gave was apt and decisive. He said, Ya Rasulullah, a'afru ba'd al-Iman? Should I become a kafir after I have already believed in you? That means all those who ran away, they should be careful about their status in Islam. They should decide. Well, when the Prophet came to Medina, the people started criticizing the Prophet. After what they have done themselves, they started blaming the Prophet. Now anybody else would have lost his head in them. The Prophet kept quiet and smile. And the ayat in Ali Imran, number 159, says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Fabima Rahmatim min Allah Linta Lahum, Walau Kunta Fawan Raliz al Kalb, Lan Fawum min Hawlik, Fafu an Hum was Tafir Lahum. O Prophet, it is a part of our mercy that you are so soft and kind. Had you been severe and harsh hearted, these people would have broken away from you. So forgive them and seek their forgiveness from Allah. Rahmatum min Allah. The Prophet forgave. Afterwards the Prophet sat with them and told them where these people had erred. But at that time, now, this is where I say, and I finish inshallah ta'ala within a few minutes, that rahmat and being merciful and kind and being graceful is a virtue that we have got to adopt. Not only that, my friends, but to teach our children to adopt. It's very important. How does the household run if there is no mercy, if there is no kind? How does society run if there is no mercy, no kind? If somebody falls sick, the Prophet said, go and visit him. Ayadat, visiting is But if you are told that if you are visiting this particular patient, he will fall ill, his condition will deteriorate. Then to visit him is unkind. Not to visit him will be kind. Correct? And the Prophet said, when you visit a patient or a, or a person who is ill or second ill, don't stay there for hours. Just visit. Salamun alaikum. Hmm? Ten minutes. And talk sense and don't talk nonsense. Because there are very intelligent people who go and say, Somebody has died. You see, they give the news of somebody's death to a person whom they have gone to visit for health. And the man who is taken ill when he hears of somebody's death believes that this man is indirectly telling me, get ready. So the Prophet said, sit there for as long as it is bearable. And then say, be kind. In as far as the slaughtering of animals is concerned in Islam, the strict condition that the instrument used must have the sharpest possible edge. You can't use a blunt instrument or a blunt knife. If you use that slaughter, it's gunai kabira. And to choose exactly the jugular veins and two veins from this side and two veins from the other from the side, and strike in one blow to kill, that is because of kindness and mercy. There is no other way. It's haram to torture an animal. Haram. If one does not know how to slaughter, one should allow others who know 
But if you go on just cutting the straw as if you are cutting a piece of wood, it is not halal and it is not jai. That is it. Now, those animals who are not, for example, for slaughter, you find sometimes children pestering a cat, cornering a cat and pestering it. And you are sitting there, your son or daughter is doing it, it is guna. Unless we teach how to be merciful and kind. Or a young boy, young child plucking the feather of a chicken or trying to break its tender feet and you as a parent sitting there don't say anything. Guna hai kabira, you have got to say. The torturing of animals is not allowed. Kindness and mercy. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may not show us those days when a very rich man sometimes becomes a pauper. When he was very rich, say assalamu alaikum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his wisdom willed that that richness should go. Now I ignore him. Poor fellow, he's the same man. Eh? He's the same man. But now he has no money. Push up. So now, when he comes before me, I ignore him. Allah In Arabic they say, Da'wal ikha fi al-rakha kafiratun. Da'wal ikha fi al-rakha kafiratun. Bal fi al-shada'idi tu'arafu al-ikhwan. When things are smooth sailing, anybody comes and says, you are my brother, you are my father. You are my father, you are my brother, you are my elder brother, you are this and you are that. But actually if you want to know whether he's a true friend, you will know him in need, in difficulty. In the shadai, tu'araful ikhwan. When the difficulties come from all sides, then you know the true friend from the false one, my friend. The man who has lost his wealth in a society, to him we must be kind and merciful, according him the same respect that we used to respect. This is what the Prophet said. For the leaders who are going to speak tonight in the words of perhaps the best quality would be to be kind to us, not severe. We will have many lapses, we will make many errors, for them is to be and, and finally, when a father or mother fails to correct the behavior of the child, that is not kindness, it is unkind. Being unkind. At home I am sitting and you arrived. An elder person arrived. My son enters and he looks, hello, hi. American. And I don't tell him by that. Sit down. He is an elder. Say salam. He's a Muslim. Huh? Say salamun alaikum. Hmm? Wish him. Show him your. I don't tell him. Azad. This is the result that we see in the Western ways of life. Now the children today have lost respect for their elders. And not only that. They have lost even sense of kindness and mercy. So not to teach is unkind. And sometimes you take a stern measure to correct the behavior of your child. Stern measure. You become a bit strict. That strictness is self-kindness and is not unkind. Because there are places and places. Now finally, the problem. The problem. Every day there is a new application for some Jagra Fasad at home, which finally reaches the last. But it starts with some flesh. The only thing that if we practice, inshallah ta'ala, if we do, is kindness at home, and especially the Prophet said, for a wife, it is all right for me to tell her 
be obedient to your husband. But I say again, and again, and again, the prophet said, Jibreel Amin has told me again, and again, and again, tell men folks to be kind and merciful to their wives. There are three things for which the Prophet said that so much emphasis was laid by Jibril Amin that I quoted to become wajib. One was brushing the teeth. Another was the right of the neighbor. That I thought that neighbors might be even become might even become participants in the legacy that is they become inheritors. And the third about the wives, and wives, and wives. And now look at the story. Assalamu alaikum. Now look, this woman does not even have to cook. So now what does she do? No, she cooks, but uh, <coughs> salt is always less. I said, if it's salt is less, you take a salt and you immediately sprinkle over it. Inshallah, it will be all right. Be kind and say kindly. This man has never had a habit of even complimenting the wife for a good dish. Huh? Every day there isn't a bad dish. Someday there is a good dish. Huh? And if you say, MashaAllah, Ajay, MashaAllah, Bausaru, do you have to spend anything from your pocket? No. But we have not been taught how to be kind at home and not. Or when she comes in her sari on Kushali night. <coughs> And you say, Ajay to Masha. I don't have to say more than that. Is there a need of saying that? That word of compliment from the husband to the wife is an expression of that kindness which makes life. And there are ways of telling. And I believe that if this is practice, Rahma and kindness, very few problems can arise at home. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته